In earlier discussions of fundamental equilibrium concepts and methods, we learned how to use a given chemical equation and its associated equilibrium constant, as well as initial conditions, to determine equilibrium conditions or equilibrium concentrations. We're going to apply that same idea to acids and bases. However, what we're more often interested in with acids and bases is not a concentration per se, but an equilibrium pH, the negative base 10 logarithm of that hydronium ion concentration, and sometimes a pOH. And so in this video, we're going to talk through how to calculate the equilibrium pH of a weak acid or weak base solution given the initial or total concentration of acid or base before we sort of kicked in reaction with water. In the language of fundamental equilibrium concepts, we would think about that as an initial condition on an ice table, for example. So let's start by digging into a weak acid solution. So a typical problem here is I've got some weak acid, HCN, just making something up here, at some given total concentration, 0.1 mole per liter. What I'm interested in is the pH of that solution at equilibrium with respect to the reaction of the acid with water. And as in all equilibrium problems like this, right, in all problems involving calculations with equilibrium, the first thing we need is a reaction, a balanced chemical equation. And so the first thing we're going to do is write a chemical equation for acid ionization. Let's think about a general weak acid, HA, in aqueous or water solution. The most important reaction there is reaction of HA with water itself to give A- and H3O+. And this is the acid ionization or acid dissociation reaction that we've encountered numerous times already in this unit. Next up, we're going to write an equilibrium expression for Ka and note its value, which will be given in a problem. We have to know that in order to calculate the equilibrium conditions, just like we did back in the fundamental equilibrium concepts unit, of course. Next, we're going to apply the ice table method and ultimately solve for the equilibrium concentration of hydronium. If we're headed towards pH, I need to have that before I can calculate a pH value. And we can make a couple of assumptions here to simplify our life. And in many cases, it's worth looking at these to simplify your life to make the overall calculation a little bit easier. If possible, if the concentration of the acid is quite large with respect to 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter, we can assume that there's essentially no hydronium ion present initially. The initial concentration of H3O plus is equal to zero. This will make the math much simpler, as we'll see. It can also be helpful to assume that the equilibrium concentration of acid is equal to the initial concentration of acid. Now, on some level, this seems ridiculous, right? Because this implies that the reaction with water doesn't go at all. But if the acid is quite weak, this is actually a pretty good assumption. So with a, with a high concentration of HA and a relatively small Ka value, this turns out to be a pretty good assumption in many cases that simplifies the math enormously. If both of these assumptions hold, we can arrive at a Ka equation, an equilibrium equation that is greatly simplified mathematically. So in the numerator, we have equilibrium concentration of H3O plus, let's call that X, the equilibrium concentration of A minus, that is going to be equal to X as well, since H3O plus and A minus come from the same source. Both come from this acid ionization problem, uh, chemical equation that we wrote in step one, and no hydronium was present initially, so there's no plus 10 to the negative seventh there, right? This is the beauty of that zero initial hydronium assumption that we made in the first bullet there. And in the denominator, we have the initial molarity of HA, and notice that we're not subtracting X. We have omitted the minus X from the denominator there, and we've done that because of the second assumption, the assumption that X is small with respect to the initial concentration of HA. And as you'll see as you work these acid pH problems, acidic solution pH problems. This is very often true in practice. So now we have Ka values given. We have the initial HA, that value was given, and we can simply solve for X. And when these assumptions apply, you'll see that X turns out to be the square root of Ka times the initial acid concentration. So I would hesitate to recommend to apply that formula every time because you want to 
question and evaluate these assumptions in each case that they actually apply, but assuming they do apply both the zero initial hydronium and the X is small with respect to the initial concentration of HA assumption, this formula will hold for the equilibrium concentration of hydronium. And then finally, you know, in many problems in previous units, we'd be done, right? We have the equilibrium concentration we're after, but in thinking about acids and bases, we're often after a pH, and to arrive at that, well, we're just going to take the negative logarithm, base 10 logarithm of the H3O plus concentration, which is identical to X, negative log X corresponds to the pH, and that's a common last step here. Now let's turn our attention to a weak base solution in water. So here again, we're given a value, given a Kb, and we're given an initial or total concentration of the base B, and we want to know what the equilibrium pH of this solution is. First things first, we're going to write a chemical equation for base ionization, the reaction of the base with water to produce the conjugate acid and OH-. This corresponds to Kb, the equilibrium constant of this reaction is Kb, and Kb is equal to Hb plus times OH minus molarities divided by the B molarity, all at equilibrium. One point to note here is that from a given Kb value, we can calculate Ka for the conjugate base using the conjugate seesaw, and vice versa. So you can still determine the pH of a weak base solution even just with Ka for the conjugate acid by applying the conjugate seesaw before you engage in this process. And likewise, if you know Kb for the conjugate base, you can find the pH of a weak acid solution by applying the conjugate seesaw first. In the event though, let's say we've got Kb, now we're going to apply the ice table method. We've got initial concentration of B, we've got a Kb value. We're going to make similar, similar assumptions, if possible, to what we made in the weak acid case. Assuming that the initial hydroxide is equal to zero, this will hold when the base concentration, the total base concentration, is much larger than 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter, which is very common. We're also going to assume that X is small, essentially, meaning the equilibrium molarity of the weak base B is equal to its initial molarity. Initial molarity minus x is essentially the same as the initial molarity. This allows us to write a simplified equilibrium equation. Kb is equal to the molarity of hydroxide at equilibrium, let's call that x, times the molarity of Hb plus at equilibrium, that's also equal to x, notice no plus 10 to the negative 7 there because we assumed zero initial hydroxide, and in the denominator rather than having the initial molarity of B minus x, we simply have the initial molarity of B in the denominator. And again, we can solve for X, and this turns out to be the square root of KB times the initial molarity of B, and this is equal to the equilibrium hydroxide concentration. So at this point, again, in a kind of classic ice table type of problem, we'd be done. We've arrived at equilibrium concentrations and the value of X, but we want to find pH. And I think the easiest way to proceed to find pH here is to realize that pH plus pOH must equal 14. So we can, for example, calculate the pOH first and then subtract that from 14 to find the pH. Or we can take the approach shown on this slide where the pH is equal to 14 plus the base 10 logarithm of X or the hydroxide concentration at equilibrium and this will pop out the pH directly. And so whether you want to kind of split this into two steps mathematically or just apply the equation as it's sort of pre-rearranged, if you like, here in step four, it's entirely up to you. You arrive at the same answer either way.